This is a wake-up call for all of us. The world is noisy enough. You need to listen to God for yourself, by yourself. You're not being weak when you need help and you admit it. You're being wise. Also, I would like to say at this point that the covenant of life is stronger than the covenant of marriage. Do not allow anybody force a perfection that does not exist on you. That you're a Christian does not mean that you should automatically have a perfect marriage or you should automatically have a perfect life. for tuning in please if you're new here just move ahead and subscribe all right i cannot really wait to talk about this topic because i am so passionate about it i am pained i am so angry and i just really need to just speak it all out right and i need you guys to really be very active in the comment section leave a comment you might be saving a woman from going through the same thing that we had just so rest in peace that Mrs. Osinachi has been through. And share this video with someone because I know that it's going to save a lady out there, a human being out there in general, right? So let's move right into the topic for today. So popular gospel artists, Nigerian gospel artists, Mrs. Osinachi has been confirmed dead. Really so pathetic. I feel pained. I feel bitter. I feel angry majorly because of how she died so her death has been traced to domestic violence we had um celebrities like frank edwards and so many other notable nigerian gospel artists come out to you know talk about it i'm going to post that of frank edwards here so you could read it so it has been confirmed that she has been going through domestic violence and for some sorts we didn't really get to hear about it, right? Well, I, from what he said, I think quite a number of them actually know about what she, she went through, how she's been going through that, and how she's been going through domestic violence. And somehow, he said, I think he left, he, he said, he replied to someone under his comment section that for some reason, he doesn't know what the man actually has, you know, he doesn't know what the man is using to pull her out like they told her to leave the marriage but somehow she's been there and i really don't want to say there's so many things i had but i'm just going to like come from here come from there and eventually you can pick one or two from this conversation and i'm also going to be in the comment section like i said to see what you guys have to say about this help me make it make sense you know like why did she stay in the marriage regardless of and i had it's not like it's a new thing like it has been going on but for some reason she has been there and i feel like the first thing is for me i'm i'm just thinking out loud could it be for the fear of what people will say like oh i'm a gospel artist will people listen to my music what will people say and you know how some nigerians can be like when people like that come out they just you know go ahead to just tongue lash you make you feel Oh, we expect perfection from you and I'm going to say this at this point that do not allow anybody force a perfection that does not exist on you that you're a Christian does not mean that you should automatically have a perfect marriage or you should automatically have a perfect life no God did not promise us perfection instant perfection right he said the part of the just is like a shining light that shines what brighter like step by step so why do you want to assume a perfection that does not exist for yourself or why do you want people to force it on you i'm saying it to somebody who might be watching this it is okay for you not to have a perfect marriage but it is not okay for you to insist to stay in a marriage that you need to work out on this is my opinion take it or you leave it like i'm still trying to make it make sense religion yeah religion will force a perfection that does not exist on you also i would like to say at this point that the covenant of life is stronger than the covenant of marriage i mean if you are not alive you get married no 
so it wasn't like god instituted marriage first and then he created human beings he created first of all a man he gave him a walk he gave him comfort he gave him peace and then he gave him marriage so your life is more important than marriage honestly so you don't have to stay there if your life is threatened i mean in this 21st century you don't need a, a, a ghost to come and tell you that oh when you're being physically abused god needs you alive you might be wondering okay my marriage like my life is threatened but i need to be in my marriage why does god want me to live an abusive marriage oh god god needs you alive to fulfill his purpose god needs you alive more than you even need yourself to be alive so god does not want you to be in a marriage in a friendship in a relationship in a, in a company in a situation that threatens your life he needs you to be alive he wants you to be alive i mean that is the reason why he first of all gave you the life the next thing i would like to say at this point is stop postponing your joy for tomorrow when you can have it now because tomorrow might never be yours why would you want to endure something that threatens your life when you can keep your distance and pray for God to be changing it? How about, okay, I don't want to file for a divorce here. How about you packing out of that house? Just, you know, leave him, be praying for him from a distance and watch from a distance when the change, change happens. Like, okay, when the change is done, I will come back for you you know some of us we know how to just postpone our happiness oh let me just get that admission to school like my life will be perfect oh let me just find that man when i get married my life will be perfect not knowing that a time will come like oh let me just have that child my life will be perfect oh let my child just start working my life will be perfect how long will you keep postponing your happiness the joy that you cannot give yourself now i'm sorry you might not have it tomorrow i need us to cultivate a lifestyle of I will live a perfect, I will, I, will, I will live my joy today. Stop postponing your joy for tomorrow. I need us to come to a point where we, we, we live our happiness now. I'm not saying that we should take away delayed gratification, right? There is a place for delayed gratification, but not at the expense of your life, my darling. Oh, well, let me stay with this man so that eventually when he, he gets the money, eventually when he becomes a better person, he will see me as a wife that, you know, stayed in hardship. There is no reward for sufferness. There is no reward for the most enduring woman that suffered in her lifetime. So I'm going to just like ask us a few questions to think about it, leave it in the comment section. Please share with your friends and your loved ones. Let this video be actually engaging. Do you think she was scared of divorce as a sin? Do you think she was scared of what people would just say to her? And I also like to ask like, are you one of those who troll people when they come out with, with their situations, where, when they try to be vulnerable? How do you react to such people? I feel like the time has come for us to become more understanding. Let's stop, let's stop putting pressure on people to be perfect. You don't owe anybody perfection, but you owe yourself a good life. You owe yourself happiness. Nobody can make you happy as you can make yourself happy. Let's stop placing our happiness on other people. Let's stop placing our happiness on things. Your life is important. You need to be alive. Your children need to be alive. So for someone who is in, in an abusive marriage and you're scared or an abusive relationship, what will people say? Oh, I can't have my life without this person. Please, guys, let's stop it. Like keep, I've said it more than how many times in this video and I'm still going to say, you don't owe anybody perfection. You don't. Not even your pastor. You do not owe nobody perfection. You just you, you need to just be sincere with yourself. As, and I would like to say this at, at this point that it is not weak vessels. It is not weak vessels that ask for help. It is wise vessels that ask for help. You're not being weak when you need help and you admit it. You're being wise. Yes, it is wisdom. We need to come to a place where we love ourselves more than anything. Even the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. You cannot give love when you do not have it. 
I'm not saying I'm not here to preach or be selfish. No, I'm saying that love yourself enough, value yourself enough to walk out of an abusive marriage. I mean, the messages are everywhere. These messages are everywhere. You don't need God to come down from heaven to put it in our head. It is time to work on ourselves on the way we think. Work on ourselves on the way we see life. It is time to combine spirituality and intelligence. Do not come for me if you do not understand where I'm coming from. I mean, all, all the time we leave things for, oh, mm, eh, God will just do it. God will, and God is saying, I already gave you all you need to sort these things out. I feel like sometimes people just use spirituality to cover up for their laziness. We just don't want to take responsibilities. I am here to say that God is faithful. I'm here to remind us that I know a whole lot has been happening. The world has been so noisy of late. Maybe it's time for us to just, maybe it's time for you to give yourself a break and go back to what the word of God has to say. Maybe it's time for you to just go back to your secret place, to just refire yourself, to just, to just study the Bible and trust the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. Do not study it religiously. Oftentimes, we just study the Bible because, oh, so that when people ask me, I'll say, oh, I read my Bible today. Oh, I actually read five chapters and 20 chapters today. And there is no one verse working in your life. Are you that kind of Christian? Change like I said, you do not owe anybody perfection. Study the Bible because you want your life to be better. Study the Bible because you want to have a better life. Not because you want to. Don't be a religious Christian. Be a spiritual Christian. Have spiritual intelligence and understanding. This is a wake-up call for all of us. The world is noisy enough. You need to listen to God for yourself, by yourself. This is a wake-up call for all of us. And I'm here to say that God is faithful. Oh, people are dying here and there. People are dying here, here and there. Oh, what is happening? Is prayers not working again? Prayers are working. But we shouldn't blame God for our mistakes. Some things that are making us cry and weep can actually be avoided if we apply some level of intelligence. Honestly, I pray that God will help us. Leave me your, leave me your comments under the comment section, what you have to say. Please, thank you so much for staying with me until the end of this video. I love you guys. Bye. Thank you. Maybe that she has been praying for God to change him. Oh, I pray that God changes him eventually. So I'm going to endure until someday my change will come.